Welcome to the second installment on our discussion about uh, anti-cancer agents, the pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics of these agents. We're going to talk about busulfan now, which I told you is an important one that we know if we use kinetics, we can improve the therapy for our patients. First of all, busulfan is indicated for bone marrow transplant and CML. Um, and most of what we're going to be talking about is treating bone marrow transplant where we're where we're kind of wiping out the bone marrow. So we have to be very careful to make sure we have enough uh, so that you wipe out the bone marrow and not, uh, not too much to cause uh, some of the side effects that we'll talk about in a minute. The usual dosing is about a milligram per kilogram every six hours for four days. So you basically wipe out the bone marrow and of course it's uh, adjusted for kids. It's a highly lipid soluble compound um, and uh, has uh, an absorption uh, with a bioavailability of 68 to 87%. Um, some, about 25% of patients will have a delayed or decreased or both absorption and bioavailability. Um, it's bound, uh, the fraction unbound is between 45 and 68 percent so it's not very highly bound so we don't have to worry about binding very much um, oh I forgot to mention too with the absorption that um, the if you give the drug with food it decreases the C-max and the area of the curve if it's given orally um, it has a volume of distribution of about 0.44 liters per kilogram so it's a relatively small volume of distribution remember Total body water is about 0.67 or about 0.7 liters per kilogram. Um, it's clearance, it's cleared by being catalyzed by glutathione S transferase. Um, and the clearance is about 2.5 mils per minute per kilogram in adults. It's faster in kids because they have more of the glutathione transferase. Uh, the more of the enzyme that breaks it down, it's also faster in the obese. So we use this dosing weight. Notice this one is taking the ideal body weight and then only 25% of the fat weight. So if you have an obese patient, which we're gonna say is 30% or more over their ideal body weight, you're gonna use a dosing weight here, which is different than the dosing weight we use for aminoglycosides and different than the um, dosing weight we use for some other things. It also, it's important to note that it has linear clearance. Um, there's a large interpatient variability in the area of the curve that we see when similar doses are given. So you have a three to seven time variation um, between patients uh, given the same dosing regimens. The half-life is pretty quick, about two and a half hours in adults. Now. I told you I'd talk about the toxicities. Busulfan is very toxic. That's why it's used to basically kill the bone marrow. But high airing of the curves are associated with, with uh, even more toxicity, the toxicities we want to avoid. The biggest one we want to avoid is the hepatic venoclusive disease, which we'll, I'll, men, I'll call VOD from now on. It causes jaundice, hepatomegaly, fluid retention, and weight gain. Um, and Basically, all your major organs will uh, start to dysfunction, your kidneys, your liver, your heart. You may need to be hemodialyzed, ventilated. You may need platelets. You may end up having sepsis. So it's basically this big um, shutdown of your organs. Um, of patients, it used to be, of patients that got this drug, um, more than half of them would experience this venoocclusive disease, hepatic venoocclusive disease. And of those half patients, 30% of them died from this. So this is a very serious side effect that obviously you're up against a disease that's going to kill you. And if you have a chance of making it, it's maybe worth it. But this is a huge limit uh, to being able to use this drug effectively because so many people got so ill and died from the side effects. So um, pharmacists come on the scene back in 1989 at Johns Hopkins and 
found that if you shot for a certain area of the curve, you would be able to avoid this veno-occlusive disease. So they, Johns, Johns Hopkins published an article back in 1989 that shot for this window of 900 to 1500 micromoles per liter times minutes. Remember, area of the curve is going to be concentration times time. So the concentration is micromoles per liter times minutes. In Seattle, they followed this up uh, in 2000 with some more data, more specific depending upon the kind of transplant. Um, a minimum uh, area of the curve of 293 micromoles per minute in an allogenic match sibling. So if they're getting their bone marrow from a uh, sibling that has the same, um, that's a good match, you don't have to give as much of the uh, busulfan to wipe out the bone marrow. So you can, you can be much less aggressive and therefore avoid the veno-occlusive disease. Um, if it's a partially matched or unrelated bone marrow transplant, then you go for a minimum area to the curve of about 878. Um, and the maximum they always suggested to be 1300. Notice that's lower than the Johns Hopkins suggestion. Um, in the Seattle data, in another article published in 1997, relapse was observed in 38% of those that had a less than the median area under the curve. So the lower the area under the curve, the more chance that they're going to have relapse because they didn't wipe out the bone marrow well enough. Versus they had no relapse if they were above the median area under the curve. So you wanted to be on the high end in order to avoid relapse. Uh, MD Anderson also added some data in 2002 showing an overall survival and disease-free survival uh, being increased when you're within this target range that is very close to the original Seattle range. Here are some survival curves that you can see here. Um, the top one is survival probability on the x-axis. I don't know if this thing works. Oh, I don't think it is. Okay. Sorry. I'm just going to have to look at it. Okay. And you guys can see that uh, the x-axis the x is time and months of survival and the y-axis is survival probability. And obviously we want to stay at one. So that's 100% survival. The um, dotted line there is when the area of the curve was either low or higher, so outside the therapeutic range, too low, they probably had relapse. Too high, they probably had the veno-occlusive disease or other side effects causing problems in the patient. So you can see a huge difference when you stayed within that window of 950 to 152 for the area of the curve of the busulfan. The second um, picture here is disease-free survival probability. And you can see here, again, a huge difference between those inside and outside. So the top one is survival, and the second one is disease-free survival. So um, that's an even harder thing to attain. Um, oral dosing, it can be given orally or IV. Oral dosing makes it difficult uh, because you, want it, you have to capture the absorption phase of the area of the curve. If you give it IV, you don't have to give as many samples because you're just doing the um, elimination curve. Um, Johns Hopkins um, suggests that concentrations be collected on the first dose and then adjustments made by the fifth dose. So you get your concentrations and then you figure out your end of the curve and you adjust it to steady state and then you make whatever adjustments you need to. Only 18% of those with high area of the curves developed VOD when it compared to 75% if they were unadjusted. So help, having a pharmacist involved in dosing makes a huge difference. And mortality decreased from 50% to 11%. Huge difference. This is just, this kind of stuff makes me jump for joy. I mean, that we can help patients in this way. Emory University, only 10 of 18 with high area of the curves were identified and adjusted. And veno-occlusive disease occurred in 30% uh, of those that were above the therapeutic, the range that was hit and um, only in 3% that were below. So the veno-occlusive disease is really minimized if you keep that area under the curve low. Drug and disease interactions with uh, busulfan. Phenytoin will induce 
Maybe we think inducing the enzyme that clears it, therefore increase, increasing clearance by 15%. Itraconazole inhibits, we think, the enzyme decreasing clearance by 25%. Um, Tylenol, APAP, also may inhibit um, the GST, which is a theoretical issue. We, don't, we haven't seen cases reported yet. Um, if you're treating the CML, you must have a higher target range than bone marrow transplant. Hemodialysis increases the clearance by 65% during dialysis, with tran which translates to increasing clearance by 11% over a day because you're just giving that over a couple of hours every other day or three times a week. All right, we're going to stop there, um, and we're going to do... We're going to um, obviously do some dosing in class. So thanks, and I'll get, uh, we'll do the methotrexate one next. Thank you.